part two of our special feature with Alex Boguski at the Fearless Cottage. So is, at this point, is there a mission and vision yet in place, or is it still developing? It's, it's develop- very new. It's developing, yeah. Um, and everyone who's gone through this sort of thing has told me, don't rush it. You know, take your time right. and don't, you know, don't leap at the first thing that comes along. And right. there's been, I, I'm a little anxious, actually, and I'll start to try to say, okay, it's this. And then I've found that I'll back out again. I'll, I'll, I'll get the sense, oh, that's not exactly it, and I'll back out again. What I know is design. You know, I grew up a designer, and right. and uh, my approach to, to advertising was, I think, pretty design-centric, and, and um, not just in terms of graphic design, but, but campaigns. I always looked at campaigns as uh, something, something, I never liked, you know this, but I never liked, hey, you got to do a commercial. I like to design a campaign, right? right? Um, so whether we did that for Truth or for many, there would be a philosophy, there would be a campaign design, there would be uh, design around what mediums we would use, which ones we weren't. I see design in a little broader context, and, and now going forward and in, in, in the areas that interest me um, are the areas of conscious capitalism or triple bottom line. It goes by a few different uh, names and more than that. But the, the notion is, businesses can be part of really positive change. Um, and nonprofits can be part of positive change, and I would include nonprofits in, in, in that too. But the very structure of them has to be designed. There's, the product has to be designed. Right. The campaign will have to be designed. So you know, what I, I think of Fearless is the beginnings of, of sort of a, a conscious capitalism design company. So that, you know, that, that other than the specificity of conscious capitalism, that design it's very familiar. Mm-hmm. You've just changed your balance of importance from the marketing to the product, the business plan. So, I mean, as you get these, are, are a lot of these things that you're approached with startups and, you know, um, ideas and, you know, what kind of things yeah. are you considering? And additionally, what kind of things are coming up on the doorstep, so to speak? Well, we, you know, I mean, we get walk in traffic here where people just come in and they say, and I have, they have, I have an idea, I've got a television show, I've got, and, you know, a certain amount of that's good. I've been really opening up my, uh, my aperture in terms of um, opportunity and, and people um, that I need to meet because I'm, I don't know a lot of this stuff. Like, I don't know much about corporate design. I'm learning more about it and I'm right. spending time hanging out with people who have dedicated their lives to um, what capitalism is, what capitalism could be, um, to uh, different forms of organizing corporations, uh, specifically to avoid the, the, um, the pressures of short-term um, performance uh, as, the, as, the, as the only way to run a company. I mean, we really run, run into that, that as a culture <laughs> now yeah. where um, if, if if, uh, if organizations are destructive, often they're destructive uh, in terms of people and planet because of those short-term gains. Um, and so right, triple bottom right. line, I didn't say that, you know, the three are, are people, planet, profit. Okay. Um, and that's, an, you know, that's a way to look at uh, conscious so basically capitalism. Basically consideration of all those on a and an even e- playing field. And even you, you give them even consideration and you try to design a structure so that as the organization grows, it's better for people. As the organization grows, it's better for planet. Like it actually makes, uh, creates more and more benefits. So you would want the organization to grow and, and, and then, you know, profit as well because as a, as a capitalist, you probably believe profit is important to really turbocharging ideas. You're very successful background in advertising and marketing must are, are you kind of like itching to get that part like you know start the marketing find something you like and then just say here's what I think the campaign could be you not, know? not so much it, I don't think that the way I look at marketing and because I've come at it from a design point of view I really like when you can when you can and you know that the book we did uh, baked in sort of talks about this too you can design things so that they don't need a lot of classic marketing right. the marketing is built into the to the business itself you know um, and and there's there's more and more examples of that being the case the word design I think a lot of people put it into a niche is this is what design is you yeah. talked about it and I don't know if everybody's heard 
can you go into a little bit more about when you say design, what it means to you? And it, it's, yeah. it's not sitting down with a knit pen or, or planning out the campaign. It's so much more beyond that. Well, I think I think that it's sort of like it's sort of creativity, right? Um, for a long time, I've been part of people saying saying I'm not creative, right? So your clients sometimes will say, "Well, I'm not creative." Well, yeah, you probably are, right? And I think design is the same way. I'm not a designer. Well, some of the greatest designers um, would never consider themselves designers, but what they designed was uh, REI. It's a co-op between customers. And, and the company itself. That's great design. Right. So s I, that's the kind of design I want to look at a, an enterprise across every aspect of the enterprise and say, how do we apply design thinking to this whole enterprise? And some of, you know, some of it might be very traditional and it might be product design, but that product design isn't really going to be very, very powerful unless it's, unless it's coupled with a great corporate design right, that right. Um, there's a great company in town called Namaste Solar right and they are uh, a very uh, they're about democratic capitalism so okay. everyone in the company owns the company and no one outside the company is allowed to own any part of the company and each person in the company gets voting rights right an equal amount of voting rights so no matter how much capital you have you have the same amount of you have one vote right um, and everyone uh, has the opportunity to vote on all the decisions that are made and all the salaries are completely transparent so everyone knows what everyone else makes. And they've been growing like, like wildfire. Really? Um, 75 people now. I like those, ex I don't know if that's a great system long term, if that's the, if that's the well, answer. The transparency question comes up a lot, you know, not just in advertising, but in, you know, corporate America, you know, how much transparency is enough and should everybody know what everybody else makes? And there's some people that have said, yeah, that's, you know, why not? And well, I'll, I'll go, I'll it's go, tough. I'll go, I'll, Line I'll, across. I'll come back to it. But, but in terms of what I love about Namaste and what I love about, uh, I love testing different types of capitalist structure. Right. So as, as we are part of investing in and launching companies, I want to encourage that. So I'll encourage that in, in companies that we invest in and, and I'll absolutely try to develop in any company that we actually launch. Right. Um, they don't have to be right, they just have to be a good experiment so that we can learn and then other people can learn, learn from that. Coming back to transparency, I, th I, think that the, I think we're having a fundamental shift and our, we're having a lot of fundamental shifts, but I, but I think that one of the shifts that's happened, um, and it's going to create a lot of conflict, is is secrecy was the old power base, right? What has been the existing right. power base? Um, you know, a good uh, Coca-Cola has a secret recipe locked in a vault. You know, that that's just a kind of a um, okay. a way to encapsulate that notion. And 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 knowledge was power, and proprietary knowledge was power we're seeing a real shift where transparency is power and the sharing of transparency or sharing of knowledge is power and so companies like facebook and google you know they're they're actually powered by this by this shift um and it's going to make it's going to be extremely difficult yeah it's going to be extremely difficult because if you come from the old power base this new notion is unfortunately not something you it's, it's a difficult transition to go from the exact opposite, <laughs> right. right? Well, you've always said, uh, when you want to make a change, make a big change. So yeah. maybe that's, but it's not easy. I always put it in the framework of what I know, it's not which easy is to transition. the agency world is what I know. And transparency is, we're, we're striving for it and it's a slow change. It's not something we can do overnight, but- um, Oh God, if you took like, everyone in the know, yeah. at least in the interior culture, you know, that's something we're actively growing mm -hmm into doing yeah but complete transparency with the clients is, is a bigger challenge so say you you know you took coca-cola and you said you know let's pick a different company because yeah. let's say let's, you take ibm you say we're going to make all it's completely transparent everyone's going to know what everyone else is making and what their package is launch it right yeah. the company is going to blow apart <laughs> um whereas whole foods has had that policy for a long time really? and it actually is the glue that keeps the company together and you've got other companies that that uh, where it's the glue too so um 
It's one of the reasons why I like being in the experiment more than, or I'm excited about it, more than um, trying to help companies through the, all these transitions, you know. There's, there's great, big, successful companies, and many of them will do well through the transition. Others will struggle. Um, but that is not as interesting as, as finding those little companies that have des designed themselves and can design themselves around the new reality. Yeah, right. And they, and, right? And they Let's see what the outcome is. There's not a lot of barriers. Control. There's not a lot of barriers. So, you know, that's just more fun. It's like building me. the snowball instead of having to move a snowball and trying to, you know, make an IBM move, move this huge thing into a new way of thinking. It's like, well, if it's at the root when you start, it's so much easier yeah, you to just grow it into. Roll it, roll, roll it downhill. Let it, <laughs> let it build. Looking back, now that you're out of advertising, was figuring out a way. I'm out of advertising. Well, out of that, advertising. But, but I mean, that's an interesting, you know, a lot of the stories have been me rejecting advertising or turning my back on them. Like, I've those never used... Those were the used... first things you said. I, I'm a designer. Those are not my words. Yeah, those yeah. are not my words. That's just someone deciding that, if, it, if anything, I feel like I'm just part of an evolution of advertising. Um, I, don't, I don't really think advertising is going to be all traditional media and I, right. you know. I, well, for anybody to say advertising I, is going to be the same as it was five years ago or yeah, yeah, I, last year is it was not very same. Over the 20 some years I was in it, it's changed so much. Um, and I think it's going to continue to change. Um, and I think that it's going to be a really interesting thing to be a part of. And, and, and I will be a part of it, but just in a, in a different way. So then I'll bring back that question that, yeah. you know, but you're not in the the big agency structure right now. Yeah. And um, you said, you know, would have loved to have been able to bring that transparency to big agency. Now, I'll kind of ask two questions and you can pick which one fits. Um, the problem with an agency and transparency is, there, is that an agency represents a lot of other companies. Mm -hmm. If you're Whole Foods and you decide we want to be transparent, that's right. your decision. If you're an agency and you decide that you want to be transparent, you, you, can't. you are going to effectively make other people transparent that may not choose that. And that's, you shouldn't make, I think that's one of the rules of transparency. Make yourself transparent, but don't go out trying to make other people transparent. Right. Then I'll ask the other half of the question, which kind of relates a little. In the, after we finished last year, we started chatting about and engaging me in what we do and how I want to build my agency. And you said, you know, how big are you? Oh, you know, we're 20, we'd love to be 50, and, you know, and you said we were about 976. How many people can you really know? And it was, it, I saw it was a troublesome thing. I don't know if it was really eating at you, but, you know, it's like, how many people can I really know? I'd love to be able to know everybody here. Yeah. He said, I could probably know 50. Maybe I could know 100 people. You can, you can know But 100. that leaves 800 and some people that I just, you know, don't, you don't know. know. Yeah. And that's and that big agency. It I mean, was that one of the things that started eating at you? Is like, yeah. I don't know them, and, you know, yeah, it definitely is one of the things that's less fun for me. I think I'm a small, I'm a small organization kind of person. Yeah. And um, you said to me, you said, yeah, 50 is a good number. 50 is a know? great number. <laughs> you know, there's some hard, that, like from 60 to 60 and then moving past that seemed to be a, a difficult moment. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, going past 100 can be a little bit tricky because yeah. then we you talked really about that start last to time. It was not. just like 60 to 900. Was the yeah. <laughs> What it was fun for you me didn't is even notice we, it really. It was you know no just, from six yeah you don't <laughs> notice it when 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 we first moved to Boulder what was fun was that we were a massive organization but we came out with 40, 50 yeah, right. people so it was this tiny thing within this giant Riding thing. dirt bikes around the warehouse and, and it, <laughs> it felt it felt really good for for quite a while that was that was fun but I I like to I like to know people and if you don't know people then like legends start you know like. Don't eye them in the, you know, don't look at them in the halls, you know. And so I'd be like, hey, and people would just like keep walking down. Like, straight forward. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you have terrible things happen. Like you get on the elevator with somebody and, and uh, yeah, how's it going? We, you know, what do you do? Oh, I work in media. Oh, that's cool. Um, how long have you been at the agency? You know, it'd be pretty, pretty new. A year. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you kind of keep keep to yourself, right? No, actually, uh, yeah, I'm on the, the meeting, softball guys. team, and yeah, exactly, <laughs> whatever. You I just, ran into you don't play, you know, right? Yeah. right. That's it for part two with Alex Boguski at the Fearless Cottage on the Buzz Bubble. Tune in next week for part three.